Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to play with the ideas that I present on my channel. My name is Gretchen Vogel. I've been a trans medium and a practicing psychic for more than four decades. This is for July 4th, 2022, and this is as political as I'll ever get. We're going to explore the idea of egalitarianism, which is not linked to any political party. The meditation that this work was taken from was done with a designer from the 1930s called Russell Wright. The stock market crash of 1929, which in seven years, we will probably be aware of the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the Great Depression, culminated in a whole movement in the 1930s toward egalitarianism. And I actually wanted to start with something that was toward the back of this meditation first, because it's exactly what's going on now in our country. This is directly from the meditation. Now, there is so much greed influence here in this country, which before the Great Depression, it was easy to foster because there was so much abundance in this country. It was tremendously easy for this greed movement that is actually again at its height right now but it will be broken apart. This greed influence is very strong in relationship to this country right now. But the greed movement will lose its power. Then it comes back again. And we will see this greed recession, greed recession cycle until humanity decides to foster and embrace egalitarianism instead. So let's drill into this concept of egalitarianism. And I just could not believe how timely this meditation was to what's going on in our country right now. He, he continues, I, this is his voice now. I am particularly pleased because the 1930s was the focus of his life. He chose to be an adult designing, surrounding that decade with its major focus and joining the creativity that was so manifest in that one decade. He chose to be part of a group that really was rather widespread. And it was a cultural turning point in America. It's called the Seminole Decade. America was the only country new enough and rich enough where this advancement into egalitarianism could take place. You see, <laughs> history exists before it is made. So there was a group of people who chose to come in to incarnate in kind of a prehistoric sense and actually make history through the actions of their lives in the 1930s. Particular individual events were not predestined, but the focus of the creativity of the focus of several major personalities chose to came, come in here and would make the changes that would affect the rest of American culture. The 1930s were a turning point as substantial and meaningful as the Declaration of Independence was for America. We can look at those two events uh, he said, well, the Civil War was more of a destructive than a constructive event in American history. But the Great Depression and the Renaissance that took place because of the Great Depression 
would be the only event that would rival the design that is on par with the Declaration of Independence, that all men would be created equal. So there was a group of people that chose to manifest their creativity simultaneously, even though they may not have even known each other or been that connected in their work, but they all had a prehistory decision to enact the changes that they did in the 1930s. And the Roosevelt's were definitely part of that too. Um, he did cite several people uh, in this meditation, but he said the whole meaning that was meant by the egalitarian movement of the 30s, that there should not be abject poverty and extreme luxury the whole meaning of this movement in materialization for egalitarianism very much in also the cultural perception or the cultural sense of the individual. It was to eliminate class boundaries that seemingly should not occur in a country dedicated to all men being created equal. <laughs> However, the way that the economic systems prior to the 30s were being enacted did foster abject poverty in contrast to gigantic wealth. So on the economic scale, the 1930s were all about supporting egalitarianism. In a design sense, it was to create ease and comfort in the home place, <laughs> which is like amazing because after COVID, we all stayed home. But egalitarianism was the underlying theme and concept that everybody should be able to travel, should have telephone, should have access to electricity should have in their own cultural sense that nobody would go hungry. Everyone should have the small pleasures of good design around them. Information should be accessible to everybody. They were fostering in the 1930s, the spreading of the benefits that had heretofore had only been for the extremely wealthy and instead disseminate and spread this into the masses. And this all resulted into the creation of the middle class in America. Now, this didn't mean the bland commercialism that is so rampant now in the United States where everything looks the same and we all live like robots. The 1930s very much fostered the difference in people's culture, not what is being promoted now, not in a George Orwell sense. And it wasn't socialism. The 1930s cultural technicians, he used that word, wasn't that interesting? They wanted to not erase the natural cultural differences of people who had populated this country. It was only meant to enhance their lives. So this movement was very focused on individual lifestyle, the family, the family unit, the family that's making its way through life. Predominantly at that time, it was the male breadwinner, the male provider was steering the ship of the whole family in the course of their lives. But of course now women are doing this too, but it was designed to give individual breadwinners as much leeway as possible for the choices of making a living. The idea of a society where individuals fostered and generated what happened in the 
over all society, not a society that would dictate how individuals would proceed with their lives. He said, you could call us the egalitarianisms. It was a true revival of the concept of the Declaration of Independence. It was a revival and interpretation of the Declaration of Independence through social programs that every man and woman should have the opportunity to provide for their family the necessities of life. And I think I'm going to stop there and I'm going to make two parts to this because there's a lot to chew on here. So thank you so much. And I'm going to put these two videos up pretty much simultaneously. So um, stay tuned.